people i am checking in to share something with you and by the way i wore this particular sweatshirt for two reasons for one it goes with the story i'm going to share and number two um, i already had it on so i wasn't going to take it off all right so check this out hopefully you know that one of the reasons that i started the leadership drives podcast is that i love to hear the stories of what drives people to do what it is that they do I really do believe that all leadership is personal. That's my little hashtag, by the way. I believe that because I believe our experiences and many of our perspectives start off through things that we've lived through and things that we believe that we know that we know that we know. And oftentimes through experiences that we don't even dissect. I think we don't realize that we spend a lifetime growing out of what we grew up in, if that makes sense. And I think when we fail to examine those things, sometimes we fail to fully understand what it is that drives us to do the things that we do, what it is that motivates us to run from the things that we run from. So in that vein, I'd like to share this. One of my favorite genres of books are biographies and autobiographies. And I recently completed Richard Pryor's memoir called Pryor Convictions. Pryor is spelled the way his last name is spelled, P-R-Y-O-R. Y'all, it was the saddest book I've read in a very long time. When I say sad, I say sad. I mean, the reason I wore this shirt is because so much of his story was wrapped around addiction. He was addicted to coke. Then for a minute, he was freebasing. And I don't know the difference between freebasing and crack, but he was freebasing coke and snorting coke and drinking all the time. And what was amazing to me, perhaps not to others, but to me, he did this on camera in the public view. I mentioned this to my cousin who's a little bit older than I am. She was like, yep. And he did this on stage and we all laughed. But here's the thing that was amazing about the story. When he talked about who he was and how he became Richard Pryor, it was so sad. He grew up in a brothel. He never thought his mother loved him. And he felt like the only time he was ever acknowledged for being just even alive, the only time he had any sort of affirmation was when he was being funny. He said literally that there was one time he fell in front of his grandmother and literally he slipped in some dog. And he said most of the attention he got from her wasn't positive and he realized that made her laugh. And he started to pay attention to the things that he was doing where people laughed and he figured, well, if I do more of that, at least the attention I get isn't negative and maybe that's an indication of how much they love me. He literally talked about how every part of his life was about searching for what gave him value in the eyes of other people because he didn't have value in his own eyes. He even talked about at one point, he tried to emulate Bill Cosby. He said he got so good at it. One person in an audience where he was was like, damn, it's remarkable how much um, you are like Bill Cosby. He said he was trying to be Bill because he didn't know who Richard was. And just his entire story, all of the wives, he was married six times, one woman he married twice. He had a bunch of kids by different people. He even said he thinks his kids turned out great despite him because he couldn't be a good parent because he needed one. His story was so, so sad. And then toward the end of his life, when he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, he talked about the emotional guilt and shame and the self-blame and the questioning. Did I bring this on myself? And his whole life to me was just really, really sad. And it looked at, for me, the his story was just really about a lack of validation and trying to figure out where to get it. And in his journey to figure out who he was and how he could be lovable, he got caught up in wine, uh, women, and drugs. And by wine, I mean alcohol of all sorts, you know what I mean. But yeah, it was just a really, really sad story. And I think that it's interesting how the world saw that and we didn't know what to do with it other than laugh at it. I'd like you to think about which parts of your life story are driving you and how you are dealing with the parts of you that are hard to reconcile.